What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. I just got done rigging up a bunch of spinning rods for offshore fishing and I put some baits on that I've actually never thrown before as well as some tried and true staples. We're getting towards that fall transition period, the dog days of summer, fishing is really tough and a lot of bass start to suspend this time of year. This makes finesse offshore fishing a really great option and I wanted to show you what I'm going to be experimenting with over the next two months to give you guys some ideas of how you can potentially put some more fish in the boat. So let's get into it. The first thing I have rigged up here is a finesse swim bait rig. This is the three inch mega bass spark shad on the Okashira spin head. I first started throwing this bait last year after Chris Zaldane crushed him on Lake 10 Killer, which is like an hour from my house in September. It was really tough and he was throwing this in like four foot of water on rock piles, which is kind of a crazy technique. I actually plan on going out and trying to replicate that on 10 Killer as well as some other lakes around here. It seems like these really small swim baits become a good option when fishing it's really tough in that September time of year. Fish have seen every single bait on the market from crankbaits, spinnerbaits, jigs, things like that. And you might need to actually downsize these smaller finesse baits to get the fish in the boat. Now this Okashira spin head is a very interesting head because it gives this bait a little bit extra wobble and because this bait's so small I feel like having a little bit of extra motion vibration is good to help fish track it. I'm also interested to see if I can catch some fish suspended in the tops of deep timber and trees with this light eighth ounce jig head, just casting it on points and things like that. There's a lot of applications for this and I'm kind of excited, excited to test it out. I catch a lot of fish actually on a mega bass three inch spark shad in the winter and in the, later in the fall with a quarter ounce ball head. You've seen me catch a lot of fishing videos on this already, but I haven't spent a lot of time fishing this Okashira spin head. I've caught several fish this summer on Table Rock, just experimenting with it, but my my results aren't that much better than with maybe a traditional like spy bait or a traditional swim bait. But I think that as we get, again, that really tough pressured situation, you could almost throw this bait in the same place as you throw a spinner bait or a crank bait and catch fish. So I'm excited to try that out, especially on these clear water lakes in my area. Now I'm rigging that on a seven foot medium moderate spinning rod. This is the Falcon Buku spinning rod. It's only like $109, so not an expensive rod, but it casts this light eighth ounce swim bait really, really well. I'm putting that on a $50 Shimano Mano Nexave, Nex, Nexave, I don't know, I'll put a link in the description. I picked this up at uh, Academy Sports. It's literally a $50 spinning reel, but it works really well. The drag system is actually pretty good for a reel at this price point. You guys know I like to fish kind of the budget end of the tackle spectrum. So a $50 spinning reel with a $100 rod gets the job done for me. And I'm putting straight six pound fluorocarbon line. This is Seagar and Vizex on here. And I actually use this rod for a lot of my spy bait fishing as I mentioned earlier. And I like straight fluorocarbon on a spy bait with treble hooks. And I probably would throw this with a braid to fluorocarbon leader if I was not too lazy to like take off all the fluorocarbon and also want to be flexible to have one of my rods that I can throw a treble hook bait on. So this isn't maybe the perfect setup for this rig, but it will definitely get the job done. My next rod is rigged up with a really unique rig that I've never caught a fish on before. I've never really even seen anyone throw it before. I don't know if it works, to be honest, but it's this upside down Texas rig. I'm sure that other guys have done this before. I've just never like heard of a tournament or anything being won on it. And what it is, is basically a Berkeley Chigger Craw, and I've taken a Neko rig weight and stuck it in the tail of that worm, and then Texas rigged the bait back Basically, I started the hook where the tails come out on the bottom of the worm, and then I rig the hook point almost by the nose of the bait where you would traditionally Texas rig it, which creates this upside down rig, and these tails kind of flap around like crazy. The weight's gonna go to the bottom first, and then the bait. It's almost like a kind of a drop shot Tokyo. I have no idea if what this is. I don't know if this is gonna work at all, but I thought this would be kind of cool to try. Again, on some of those pressured areas where a lot of guys are fishing your traditional shaky heads and maybe like a Neko rig or just you know different baits, even like a jig. And if I go with this kind of backwards rig, maybe it will be the ticket and I can get some extra fish in the boat. 
a lot of times guys I just like to experiment with unique rigs because you just never know what's going to work. This could be a complete flop and I have so many rigs over the years that I've tried to use that have not worked at all but every once in a while I'll stumble on one that does work and I can have it as a secret to myself. Well I'll share it with you guys then right away so it's not really ever a secret but they used to be secrets and they used to help me catch a lot of fish. So let's see if this rig works. I'm sure some of you guys in the comments can enlighten me about the history, the origin of this rig. I know I'm not the only one who's done this. I've seen it in a magazine or something somewhere but uh, basically for the setup for this what I'm doing is rigging it on a 7 foot 2 medium moderate rod by Jenko Fishing. It's the Gambler series rods. I really like this rod for offshore fishing. It's pretty sensitive and it casts these baits really really well. These like quarter ounce size baits so it's got enough length and backbone to set to hook on them as well. So this Jenko Fishing Gambler rod is really nice. I think it's $150 retail. Now I'm pairing that with a Revo X Abu Garcia spinning reel. It has 10 pound braided lines, my main line, and then an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. I have to use like a 30 foot leader. And that's really my setup here. I don't know if that's the right setup for this bait either. I don't know where I'm gonna throw this, but I'm gonna experiment with it, see where it goes, and hopefully catch some fish on it. My next rod is rigged up with something that I'm really excited to try. I heard about this from a guy at the Bass Tank when I was getting my boat wrapped, and he called it an Ozark secret rig for suspended bass. It's basically like a modification of a Ned rig where you have a little blade in the tail. I'm using a three inch Bass Pro Shops Sticko and then putting a Mega Bass Okashira head that's an eighth ounce head on there. It's like a swim bait head. And what he told me is that this is like the best bait for catching schooling fish and suspended bass offshore. You can just kind of throw it out there when you see fish busting on the surface or suspended on like bait and stuff like that and just kind of work it through the fish. I have no idea how to work this thing. I don't know if you just kind of reel it in, if I twitch it. I'm actually excited to kind of pair it with the uh, live scope I just put in my boat back there and see if I can actually see some fish come up and eat this thing. It's really unique because it has this spinnerbait blade that you can insert in the tail of the bait and I've done this a lot with Cinco's before when I fish on the Arkansas River. You'll take a black and blue Cinco and put a little Colorado spinnerbait blade in the tail, fish it weightless and catch a lot of fish. And kind of repurposing this for offshore fishing could be a really good approach and alternative to your traditional swim bait like the Spark Shad. I feel like, again, as you get later in the year, fish start getting conditioned to your traditional baits, your traditional swim baits, like a Kai Tech, or even like a drop shot. And by throwing something that is unique with maybe a spinnerbait blade, a different profile, a different fall rate, you can put a lot of fish in the boat. Now I'm reading this with a seven foot two medium light action spinning rod. This is a Quantum Smoke S3 rod, $150. And then a super old Quantum Tour Edition spinning reel. It's a 20 size, I don't even know what like model number it is. It's just a PTI 20 Tour Edition. This reel has 10 pound braided line for the main line and then a six pound fluorocarbon leader. And again, I have about 30 feet of line for my leader. And I connect that all with an FG knot. That's the knot I use on all my spinning rods when I'm connecting my braid line to my main line. I've never had an issue with breaking that knot and it goes through the guides better than a modified Albright or a blood knot or any other knots you can tie. And it takes a lot longer to tie the FG knot. And I can make a tutorial on that if you guys want me to because I've got pretty quick at tying it. It's not a quick knot, but if you can put 30 feet, 40 feet a liter, that will last you two, three fishing trips a lot of times, so you don't have to retie the knot that often. But this is a really cool rig. You probably saw it in the thumbnail, and I'm excited to give it a shot. You will see if I catch him on it, because I will be talking about it if I do. Really quick, guys, if you enjoy this video and want to support more content from Fish the Moment, one easy and free way to do that is by going to my website, fishthemoment.com, then going to the Support Fish the Moment tab at the top of the screen. This will take you to a page with a couple different ways to support my channel, and one of those is my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. All you have to do is click on this link, it'll take you straight to Tackle Warehouse, and then if you check out on Tackle Warehouse using that link, I'll get a small percentage of the profits from any purchases you make. And the way this works basically is that there's a little tag at the end of the Tackle Warehouse URL, question mark from equals fish the moment, and anytime you use that link, they'll know that I sent you to the website. And so one way to make sure you always use this link when you shop at Tackle Warehouse is just to bookmark the page and add that to your bookmarks bar. 
That way, anytime you go to Tackle Warehouse from that bookmark link, you'll be taken straight to Tackle Warehouse using my link, and I'll always get credit for all your purchases. So if you do like the content on my YouTube channel and want to support me further, this is a really easy and free way to do it, and I really appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to do that. On my next rod, I have a staple in my offshore fishing arsenal, and that's a drop shot. If I had one spinning rod to take with me, and I could rig it up with one rig, it would be a drop shot. You can video game fish with this, drop it straight below your boat and kind of watch them eat it on your graph. You can cast it on inactive fish in a big school. You can also fish it suspended halfway down and work it through the middle of the water column and catch fish. There's just so many ways to catch them on this bait, and that's why it's always on in my boat. And my standard rig with this uh, drop shot is to throw a six inch robo worm. I love the straight tail wor robo worm and I usually pick it up in a color that either has some blue, purple, or pink because I fish a lot of spotted bass lakes and for whatever reason spotted bass love blue and pink colored worms. I also have some green pumpkin worms and stuff to try just in case. I'll also carry a lot of other styles, body styles and uh, bait styles just to see if one might trigger a few extra bites out of a school for me. So I'll throw baits like the striking half shell, I'll sometimes put a little mega bass spark shed on there, the flatworm by Berkeley, things like that. And really I just try to experiment with different styles, body shapes and stuff like that throughout the day to see what the bass are biting the best. But on Table Rock where I fish a lot with a drop shot, they just seem to prefer that six inch row worm over anything pretty much 95% of the time. And when I'm rigging this worm, I'm always wacky rigging it with a size two Gamakatsu Neko rig hook. That Neko rig hook has a really long shank on it compared to traditional drop shot hooks, which I believe increases my hookup ratio. In terms of the weight that I drop shot with, I used to switch between a 3 8 ounce weight and a quarter ounce weight depending on the situation. I would go with a 3 8 ounce weight when I was vertically fishing, dropping the bait straight down, and the quarter ounce weight when I was casting that drop shot out there. But that caused me to have to change weights and it just kind of wasted some time when I was on the water. So I recently switched to using a 5 16 ounce drop shot weight, which I find to be the perfect balance between both weight sizes. I can drop this drop shot straight below the boat and video game fish no problem, the bait gets down there pretty quick, and I feel like I am not spooking any fish by using a really heavy weight when I'm casting my drop shot offshore. So I would recommend going with a 5 16 ounce drop shot weight as a starting point, especially for fishing in that 15 to 30 foot of water range very consistently. And then I'll always use like a 12 to 18 inch leader between my hook and the weight that's subject to change based on what I feel like the fish are doing, where I see them positioned on the graph, and I'll experiment with that throughout the day. And then in terms of the rod and reel that I'm using with my drop shot, I'm currently using a Quantum Tour Edition Mike Worm Signature Series rod from like 12 years ago with the old Tennessee grip. And I'm not using this rod because I love this Tennessee grip. It's just the only drop shot rod I have. I don't have that many spinning rods, to be honest. I always focus a lot more on power fishing, but you know, you gotta make do with what you got. And this rod is pretty cool. The whole concept is that you tape your reel to your rod so that you can have better sensitivity and feel your bites better. It gives you, I guess, better connection with the cork or the blank or something. I don't think it makes that big of a difference to be honest and it's kind of a pain in the butt having to untape and then retape up my rod when I want to change reels so I just haven't changed reels on this rod in like six years <laughs> it's just been on here so it's not that big of a deal though but it's a seven foot medium action there's probably a lot of other really good drop shot rods out in the market too but this is just one i'm using and i'm pairing that with a super old quantum tour edition pt reel don't know the model they don't make it anymore so it guess doesn't really matter and i'm putting 10 pound uh, braided line main line and then a six pound cigar and viz x fluorocarbon leader i always drop shot with six pound fluorocarbon don't have any problems with break offs or anything and I feel like the lighter line you can get away with, the better. So that's my go-to drop shot setup. I catch a ton of fish on it. You'll see me making a lot more content with a drop shot here in the near future. My last rod has a rig on it that you've seen me throw a lot recently, and that's the Offshore Neko rig. And I have checked the pronunciation of this rig. Some people call it the Nico rig, some people call it the Neko rig. It originated in Japan, and the word Neko means cat, so it's like the cat rig. And that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, so that's how I'm gonna pronounce it from now on. If that 
annoys you, I apologize. I'm just gonna call it the Neko rig because I hate flip flopping. I called it Nico rig and Neko rig interchangeably like 12 times in my last video, and I just need to pick one and go with it. But the Neko rig is basically a Yamamoto six and a half inch cut tail worm with an eighth ounce Dobbins nail weight and then a one aught Gamakatsu Neko rig hook. This is a pretty interesting little rig and I've caught a ton of fish on it in recent videos. So check out those videos if you wanna learn how to fish it, the situations it applies in, and my unique retrieve that I've discovered to trigger inactive schools of offshore bass with this bait. For my setup, I'm throwing a seven foot four medium action quantum smoke S3 spinning rod with a quantum smoke spinning reel, it's a size 30, with 20 pound braided line mainline and an eight pound floor carbon leader. This is a pretty beefy rig, so I think I can get away with eight pound, no problem, eight pound fluorocarbon. And I like that longer rod, that seven foot four medium action, just so I can really drive this hook home in deep water. It also helps me cast this heavier rig a little bit better. So that's pretty much all my rigs. I got four spinning rods in the boat. I don't go overboard with spinning rods just because I prefer fishing bait casting equipment when I can. But I found offshore more and more every time I go that I need to be using these unique rigs, unique baits to put fish in the boat. I have some other unique stuff I'm testing with my bait casting equipment, which I can get to in a different video. But I wanted to focus on my finesse rods today, show you what I'm experimenting with, give you some ideas on my setups, my equipment, show you that you don't need brand new rods and reels and expensive gear to catch fish. I also have a few other baits that I'm planning on throwing on these rods if it, the situation comes up. One is the Duo Realis Spin Bait 80, a spy bait. You've seen me catch fish on that uh, earlier this year. I will also be experimenting with a little Ned Rig. This is the Jewel Baits uh, Ned Rig head with a Missile Baits Ned Bomb Worm. And I'm definitely gonna be catching some fish as well on a little shaky head. I love catching fish on a shaky head, especially in the fall. There are situations where it works really well, even better than like a little jig. And this is just a little eighth ounce jig head, shaky head jig head with a four inch Strike King finesse worm. Nothing fancy, but those are kind of the rigs that I plan on experimenting with, trying. Hopefully you'll see me catch a lot of fish on these rigs going forward. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know. This is a you know different style of video again than what we normally do, but I thought that you guys might like to kind of get inside the or behind the scenes on what I'm thinking, what I'm trying to do when I go out to the lake, and then you can see it come to fruition in the video. So if you guys enjoy this, let me know in the comments. And if you want Randy to do something similar to this as well, whether he's prepping for a tournament or just a fishing day, let me know because we can make that happen too. So thanks again for checking out the video, guys. We'll see you next one.